All right. Thank you very much, Ben. Sorry for being nervous. Uh, that was a tough act to follow. That was really cool. Yeah, she's got a great framework. Yeah. And we do a lot of work with you, too. As a matter of fact, I'm like the oldest guy in my whole organization by far. Um, so I can relate. Uh, so I'm, my name's Brett Holland. I'm with an organization called Creative HQ. Anybody heard of Creative HQ? We're, we're local here. Um, we're actually part of the Wellington, broader Wellington city government, believe it or not. We're wholly owned by Wellington NZ, which is this amalgamation of a lot of things. Um, we've been around since 2003. We started as the local startup incubator for tech startups. Um, and we've grown from that. So I'd, I'd like to say we're probably an innovation service provider. Uh, my title is GM of Innovation Services. Okay? Um, and we do work, we do a lot of work with startups still. But we do work with big companies, um, we like Fonterra, Becca, Trade, Trade Me, and others. Uh, we do a lot, of, a lot of work with the government, like the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Social Development, uh, Ministry of Business. Um, and we're starting to do a fair amount of work with other governments on behalf of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Vietnam, Philippines, Indonesia. Um, to really bring about innovation. So, so thinking like a startup, thinking like an innovator. Um, but before I jump in, and I'll talk about, this is one of our programs, Lightning Lab. It's our major program, our main program for startups these days. Um, but I wanted to talk about, a little about innovation, because it's a very amorphous term, right? Um, first of all, who, show of hands, has like a good definition in their head of what is innovation? <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna put my head, hand down to I don't either. Um, what about who does innovation? Who who would consider themselves innovative in this room? I mean, your your industry is innovative. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. There's some innovative people. Awesome. Well, I want to give a little bit of you know my thoughts because I saw a whiteboard and I'm one of these people that when I see a whiteboard I can't not write on it. I'm just one of those people. So hopefully these work. So I want to give a little bit of context about innovation, because in our world, we come from a startup world, innovation has three really main components, and they'll come out in the programs that we run. So the first is team. Um, we always say, or maybe we, I always say, the unit of innovation is the team, not the person. Right? And because it's too hard, to be innovative as just one person. Um, it's a very challenging environment, right? a very changing environment. That exercise that we did, what were you doing in 2002 and what has changed since then? I mean, we're, we're changing at a much more rapid rate every year, it seems, right? So to take on something new, to build something of value, an impact, a positive impact, it takes more than a person. It takes actually a very high functioning team. But it also takes focus. So you guys might have good teams, but how often do you get to take a team of people that really work together well? You know, you may think of people in your organization, or teams you've been a part of, that really hit on all cylinders. How often is it that you get to focus all of your energy on one thing? When's the last time you've gotten to focus all of your energy on one thing? Friday. What's that, Friday? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good, it's rare, yeah. For about 10 minutes, right. Can you do that? This program does it for three months, right? Can you do it for a week even? And we do things called design sprints that get companies focused on one thing for a week. I mean, literally, you put the vacation responder on, you don't check anything, maybe in the breaks a little bit, but a week of focus, right? And the last thing about, about innovation is mix. My one thing is terrible at spelling. Experiment. It's all about experiment, right? So it's a team that's allowed time and space to focus to be experimental, right? This is really tough to do in the government. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun, right? We're, we're running a program right now, uh, a program like this, that's been three months of 10 teams that are all government teams, all multi-agency, uh, large uh, agency, 
local municipality, private sector, all coming together to experiment. And finishes this coming week. So, so if we think about, it takes a team, it takes focus, and, and then uh, the ability to experiment and learn from that experiment. Frameworks, like we were just exploring, like James was talking about, good frameworks for experimentation. And then maybe some of this will make a little bit more sense. So if I get that, okay. yeah, oh, big buttons advance. Big, big buttons advance. All right, so. Lightning Lab is a program that we started at CreateHQ in 2013. Um, it's called an accelerator program. An accelerator program? It's not like that's CERN, by the way. Um, it's not that. But it's, it's actually it's a program that focuses on getting either startup businesses or innovation projects from zero to feasible in three months or if it's a startup, zero to investable in three months. We didn't come up with the idea. They do it all over the world. It seems like every city's got multiple ones of them. We're kind of the main ones in New Zealand. We've done about 12 of these programs. Uh, in the startup space, about 20 in total. Um, but what is it? So in three months' time, you've got to figure out, is there a problem to be solved in the market? And who has it? You've got to validate that you've got a solution that can solve it, and you've got to figure out how to implement it and scale it. So all of this is experimental. All these are, we call them, build, measure, learn loops of experiments. Experimenting, experimenting. Right? And what we try to do in an accelerator is not only have teams, startups, teams are usually about three or four people, not big teams, small teams. Um, go through this process and be supported by, we've got tools and methodologies ourselves, like Jane. We've got mentors that come in and help, and every team's got a board of mentors. Um, we have experts that come in and help them on specific tasks. We have coaches that take them through a process. Um, and we set up a culture that makes it very conducive to do so. So we try to get them to be very effective in doing this, because three months actually is not a whole lot of time to get to a really viable concept, especially when you're Figuring out, nope, that's not going to work. What do I do next? Nope, that's not going to work. What do I do next? Because that's experiment. That's what experimentation is. Like I said, we've done uh, but well. After this week, we'll be 20. Uh, we're members of a global organization that has accelerators all over, all over the world. Um, we've got about 212 companies that have come through. Anyway, uh, our process is methodical, so it takes that three months and. It, breaks it down into what we call sprints. There's all these crazy terms that we like to use. Agile, anybody heard of Agile before? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we would use it too. Mm -hmm. um, but it, we, we try to make sure that teams actually operate very effectively. They've got a goal for a week. They work on that goal. Everybody knows their role. Um, they check in every day on how they're doing. Then they check in as a team with their advisors every week and set another goal. Retrospective of what they learned, so they go the next week. Um, and we even use tools, and I, and I like this one. Every sprint has tools that make it more effective learning. Right? We even have this tool if you're going to do an interview, we do it with cards, which is really weird. First time someone sits down and goes, Okay, I want to interview you, and you start breaking out cards, they go, What is this? But it's a fantastic way to learn. So we actually lay out what are the problems that you have? What are the solutions that you try? What outcomes are you seeking to these problems? And if you get those outcomes, what does it mean? And we lay out potential cards on the table of what they could be with blank ones they can fill in. And they prioritize and they talk about them. You know, it's a great way to take a qualitative bit of information and turn it into data. And it's a fantastic way to prioritize and have people drive that prioritization. And at the back end of doing this, well, you have data. Right? So when we experiment, if you're going to take on innovation and you're going to focus your time, you've got to make it worthwhile. So everything you do has to be more bang for the buck. Right? Everything you do has to be more insights, more directive, more definitive, so you learn faster and you learn more completely. This was healthcare company. Um, so, what I w was asked to talk about from Ben is, um, what do we do in your space or adjacent space? 
Well, we ran one of these accelerator programs in the tourism industry uh, just this past year. We ran it out of Christchurch. Uh, we actually ran it out of the airport. Uh, so these teams were <laughs> inundating visitors in the airport, left and right, which is great. Um, and, um, and it was a three-month program. And the reason we decided on doing it in the tourism space is because we found that it was actually a perfect space for doing innovation, or at least having a catalyst to allow startups and some of the you know, industry players to take on this focused experimentation. Right? Tourism, and I'm sure you guys see this, so we work with <coughs> industry business and their policy team, we work with the tourism industry at Taroa and their group, I don't know if anybody here is members of TIA. Um, we work with um, Christchurch NZ, and, and we work with all the you know, regional tourism offices um, down in the South Island because we were running it out of there, uh, as well as some of the other, Air New Zealand was involved, Wayfair was heavily involved. Um, and, and ultimately, um, we found that the tourism industry has been fairly academic. Um, the folks like MB like to make, put big studies out and take a lot of surveys and then go, this is what the tourism industry needs. But no one really provides the vehicle to do this and this. Right? So that's kind of what we tried. Uh, and it was great. So we had 10 ventures in the program. Eight of them were startups. Two were project teams that were sponsored by a lot of the uh, bigger players. MB sponsored one along with Wayfair and um, a couple other uh, volunteer organizations that focused on volunteering, volunteering for tourists, what they call volunteerism. Um, Crescent Airport and all of the uh, RTOs in South Island did another one around uh, data, visitor flow data. And these were the teams, ultimately, um, which were my South and Lycan, these two, were the project teams. But the rest of these were startups that came in. Um, and, and ultimately, they came, this one came from um, Melbourne. They came from all over New Zealand, primarily. These guys were from way up north. Or no, these guys were from Christchurch. Here, here, here. These guys were from way up north. Um, and they were a broad mix of startups. So this is an electric vehicle company, or, or a company that helped you take tours with an electric vehicle and put itineraries around and figured out how you get past that. Anybody have an electric vehicle here? The angst that you have when you travel long distances with an electric vehicle, that's what these guys were all about. Um, these guys were about distributing campgrounds in uh, farm stays and helping out um, you know, farmers uh, better utilize their land and create better experiences for uh, open farm stays. Um, and I'll tell you about a couple of them in specific. These guys are really interesting. Um, Stay Native was a group that um, are, are from way up north. They uh, effectively came into the program with the idea of doing like Airbnb but for Marathas and having a, uh, a Maori experience uh, for, for visitors. And ultimately, as they explored in the uh, program, that there was a lot more to authentic indigenous experiences. It wasn't just about staying. It was about the participation. It was about understanding the community, understanding the culture. And they actually helped providers understand what their mana was. What was attractive about just what, who they were and what they were doing to where they could actually create a platform that attracted people to them. Uh, really great company. And they accomplished one of the things that's a big issue in New Zealand, which is distribution of visitors. I mean, you hear about this all the time, and you probably see this, but the visitors who come, especially who come from far away, tend to go to the hot spots, right? Um, and, and there's so much to see and do around New Zealand, right? And these guys were all about promoting the not hot spots. Um, and doing it in a way that was really culturally profound. This was one of our project teams. So they looked at um, the idea of, can we attract visitors to come to New Zealand for volunteer opportunities? 
And if so, who are they? And why would they be interested in that? And there's a bunch of things in play here. I mean, if you talk to Air New Zealand, you talk to the airports, they're really paying attention to this idea of social license to fly long distances because of the carbon footprint, right? So that's why they were interested. You talk to tourism NZ, and they're like, you know, there's something in this. There are countries that are starting to promote this. I wonder if there's something in it for New Zealand. So MB, who sets policy, sponsored these guys. And you had a team here of people who'd never worked together, who came from volunteer organizations, who came from social organizations, came from Google, um, and, and ultimately came together to study, well, are there anybody? Is this real? Are there visitors that really want to volunteer? Who are they? What are they looking for? And are there even opportunities? And then on the other side, volunteer organizations, people who need volunteers, are they even interested in having visitors? You know, some of the first things they heard were like, mm, I don't know about these guys. You know, sometimes we've got to train up our volunteers. So, so ultimately, they found the sweet spot, and this is what the experimentation is all about, and they experimented a ton and time again. The sweet spot was freedom campers, which is an interesting one because freedom campers tend to get a bad rap in New Zealand, especially in a lot of communities, right? And they found that the freedom campers were the ones that actually were the, wanted to volunteer. They were looking. It was the young millennials that were coming primarily from Europe that wanted to volunteer. Right? So they got together with CamperMate. Everybody, anybody ever use CamperMate? It's owned by THL? No. Got together with CamperMate and uh, have developed uh, part of the CamperMate app that looks for volunteer opportunities and then works collectively with volunteer organizations. Uh, and, and one's called Collaborate, that pulls together all the volunteer uh, opportunities around the country and brings those right into the um, Freedom Campers through CamperMate, which is a really cool opportunity. So it's starting to filter a lot more people into good opportunities, and it's providing uh, another storyline for people to come to New Zealand. So just a couple examples of what they work on. Uh, these are our partners that came into the program. So we talked about some of them before, uh, but, uh, and, and us, we I mean, had this whole building, that this was the side of the building, it was a huge thing, but anyway, um, but I want to promote the fact that we're going to do this again, and we're going to do it here in Wellington, we're going to do it starting in April, we're actually going to do it out of our own space, so it's purpose-built space, specifically for innovation, it's where we're doing this Lightning Lab GovTech program right now, um, and we want to open this up. We want to make it to where if you have that spark, if you think, hey, look, I could put a team in or I could put a person in and help, you know, we can help create teams. Those project teams, we help them put them all together. We found the woman from Google. She's amazing. Um, so we'd be happy to support any of you who want to try, uh, you know, to put something down on, hey, this the seed that's been bugging me, the thing that I want to do in the business, or the thing that, that we want to accomplish in the room for our space, that we can really you know, make our mark, create our impact, it's become a really good program for that. So uh, I'm going to stick around to this event and for, through the break. Uh, happy to talk to anybody who's interested in the program. It will run starting in April of 2020. Um, the applications for it are open, opening this coming week, and they will close at the end of February. Uh, so now's the perfect time. And, and we work with those organizations that want to put together project teams um, and help you find other partners, uh, get involved in, in some of the other um, things that are going on with some of the other sponsors. So this one, Wellington Airport, Wellington NZ, Wellington City Council, they're all in. Uh, as well as other TIAs in it as well. So, um, yeah, and we're building up the group of sponsors. So, yeah. Does it have to be related to tourism? Well, I, I kind of look, we, we think broadly. And any, anything that's engaging people, visitors, right? So I would imagine your industry engages visitors. Mm. Yeah? Is that a good assumption? Engages students. Engages students more? Okay. 
So, yeah. So, so ultimately, anything that is looking at you know, bringing people together from different places. Right? A lot of the focused efforts were on bringing people from around New Zealand to places together to do new things. Right? So, so we're looking at, and especially in this one, we're looking at what are some spark activities that draw people to new places. Right? That activate what they're doing uh, in in new areas. So, um, yeah. So, so that's kind of what this program is about. 